as a mother shed tears for her son, shot and killed by right. I've lost laughter and love. I no longer have the hope of having grandchildren. I've lost the enjoyment of holidays and birthdays and of everyday life. Wright addressed the court showing no remorse. I just want to tell y'all, I'll be home soon. I'll be Keon. I love my family. Yes. The judge clearly fed up with the defendant's attitude, stopped the proceedings, and asked prosecution to consider taking this case to trial, where Wright would face a stiffer punishment if found guilty by a jury. He has no remorse, as stated by the reporter. He doesn't care. The judge is about to address the situation how he's sitting there smiling while the mother of the murdered is crying and talking about the situation. What's messed up is how this isn't even the craziest one in today's video. But let's see what the judge has to say. But watching you sit there, smile, and laugh, and shake your head like this was no big deal, I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial, and if you're convicted, a felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. This is not the first time the teen has shocked the courtroom. Back in June during a pretrial hearing, he admitted he shot and killed 18-year-old Jordan Clee. It was October 2016, Wright said he and two other friends were trying to rob Klee when he shot Klee in the back of the head, killing him. The victim, a senior at Pioneer High School in Ann Arbor, was described as a high-achieving student and football athlete. This year was supposed to be a year of celebration, of senior pictures with prom and graduation and parties. Instead, it was a nightmare, a nightmare that no parent should ever endure. Ultimately, Jordan's family decided not to Killer laughs at father in the courtroom. This person murdered this man's son, and he begins to laugh at him and smile at him in the courtroom. Like anyone would, the father leaped over the tables and attacked him. And things got heated in a Cleveland courtroom as the father of a murder victim was addressing his daughter's convicted killer. Then this happened. He launched himself over a table, attacking the man. The deputies eventually got in the middle there and separated the two, leading the victim's father out of the courtroom. Ultimately, the judge agreed with the jury's recommendation and imposed the death penalty. The convicted murderer was found guilty of killing. Murderer laughs as victim's blind sister speaks. This is disgusting. This murderer is laughing at the sister of the victim who is speaking on the matter, but she doesn't let this affect her. She fires back and fights for her family member, and quite honestly, she puts this murderer in his place. The notorious tri-state killer may spend the rest of his life in prison. Tyrell Webster was convicted of killing a man in East Price Hill, and as the victim's family asked for justice today, Webster was laughing at them. Andrew Setters has the story you will see only on WLWG tonight. And he was taken from us on my brother's birthday, which hurts very, very much. Yeah. As the victim's family shared their pain, yes. Tyrell Webster yes. smirked. Yes. Routine yes. questions before sentencing got responses like this. Do that matter? Yes, it does. Uh. Last spring, Grover Cleveland Watson Jr. was gunned down during an argument. Today, Watson's sister, who is legally blind, stood before Judge Jody Lubers and asked exactly where her brother's killer was standing so she could look at him as she spoke. Her initial offer of forgiveness? She is now going to talk straight to the man. And when the judge tells her that he is laughing, this is when she fights back and realizes that he isn't going to be laughing forever. Let's hear what she has to say. But when I heard the story on the news, the first thing I did after I could close my mouth was just to ask God to forgive you because you didn't know what you were doing. Turned cold. Just so you know he's laughing right now. Okay. I really don't care about this because you know what? You laugh at that. But the moment they get you behind those prison walls for the rest of your life, you will be somebody's girlfriend. And that smile will no longer be on your face. It will be tears. The judge sentenced Webster to 18 years to life behind bars. From the Hamilton County Courthouse, Andrew Setters, WLWT News 5. And unfortunately, we have seen this type of dismissive behavior in court before from Tyrell Webster's brother. Lonnie Webster was also known as a bona fide hustler for the tattoo that covered his face. He's also a convicted killer and lashed out at the judge back in 2007 while being sentenced for killing a man in Hyde Park. We have a 16-year-old boy here who is going to court for murder and he's laughing on his way in. He doesn't realize the consequences he's about to face. Let me share with you what the reporters have to say. 
A developing story tonight, the video causing a firestorm of controversy. A 16-year-old charged with murder, smiling, even laughing on his way to court to face those serious charges. Simeon Adams is accused of killing Nathan Trapezano during what police call a two-week crime spree. Derek Thomas has been following this story. He joins us live now with more on today's court appearance. Derek. Adams' case is an adult court with adult penalties. If he is convicted on all his cases, he could receive over 100 years in prison. 16-year-old Simeon Adams is familiar with going to court, but not adult court, and not in chains, and not for murder. The smile on his face might indicate the teen doesn't understand the pain he's accused of causing. Even the reporter is saying this boy does not realize what he's done. He's going to be facing life in prison. I seriously don't understand what there is to be laughing about. Let's finish the news segment. 24-year-old Nathan Trapezano was gunned down to an early morning walk in the 3500 block of West 16th Street. This is the surveillance video taken just prior to the victim's murder. Adams, who goes by the nickname of Red, is charged with the murder. But his friends who attended the hearing dispute that. Free little Red, he innocent, he ain't do none of that. How do you know? How do I not get these cameras out of my face? Prosecutors believe Adams was on a crime spree. On March 30th, he allegedly got into an altercation with a man at the steak and lemonade shop at 29th and Martin Luther King. He is charged with attempted murder and aggravated battery in that case. The calendar says he's a teen. The court says otherwise. From a prosecutor's perspective, he is a murder defendant. He's not a child. He committed a serious offense, has to be held accountable for the offense, and under the law at 16, he is an adult. Adams has not hired an attorney yet. There will be a hearing on May 2nd to make sure he gets an attorney. Live downtown, Derek Thomas, RTV6. Now we probably have the most disgusting of them all. A boy shot up a school and is at his trial laughing while the judge speaks. I honestly have no words for this. The defendant's conduct was without any provocation. As Judge David Fury sentenced T.J. Lane to life in prison with no possibility of parole for a school shooting that left three students dead, Lane smirked. Earlier, the 18-year-old removed his shirt to reveal a t-shirt with the word killer. He e Do you see his shirt? He has the word killer written on it, as if this is something funny. This is honestly disgusting. He's going to be flipping off the family's parents of the victims? I, I can't believe this. Even gestured obscenely at victims' relatives. It surprised the court. Lane's attorney says he'll appeal. TJ does have his appellate rights. He opted to exercise those today. Uh, if only to scrutinize the and look over everything that was done in this case. The prosecutor said he was disgusted by the outburst. He also revealed something new. We did find out that uh, TJ had sent a text to his sister Sadie uh, talking about a school shooting about six days prior to the incident. He didn't reveal what the message said and dismissed it as a sign of what Lane planned to do. The court said in a statement for the judge, if he knew what Lane was going to do Tuesday, he would have halted the proceeding and ordered him to put on appropriate clothing. Well, this was very interesting. Click on another video on the screen right now to continue watching.